My name is Brian Dickinson and here's a quick tip for debugging large complex uh, UVM sequences in Incisive using a sequencer transaction. Uh, here's my UVM sequence. Uh, it's actually quite simple. It just runs a number of subsequences in order. Yours may be more complicated. It may be executing a large number of randomly selected subsequences or data items. Uh, when we simulate this exhaustive sequence here, uh, we can see there's something not quite right. There's something um, a little short, stubby packet created down here. And it would be nice to actually link this back to the sequence item that created this data item to work out where it came from. And there's a simple way we can do that in Incisive. Um, if we go to the Design Browser, uh, first thing we have to make sure is that we have a uh, transaction recording turned on. Uh, you can set this in your UVM code itself or uh, in Incisive. If you pick up the UVM tool menu down here, you can see there's a transaction recording on option here. If you turn this on before you run a simulation, you will enable the uh, sequencer transaction that we're after. I've done this already, okay? And indeed, if we push down through the hierarchy of my UVM code down to the test bench, into the YAP UVC through the agent and if I go into the sequencer itself you'll see here there's a transaction that's been created with the same name YAP Exhaustive SEQ as the sequence I'm running so I'm mean, executing YAP Exhaustive SEQ and here's the name of a transaction with the same name if I add this to the waveform viewer you can see now I've got a transaction view of the packets which are created by that sequence I can pull the red bar down here uh, underneath the item to see all the details, all the properties, all the fields of every packet created. Here's my short stubby packet being created here. Um, even better, if I expand this YAP exhaustive sequence, this shows me the hierarchy of this nested sequence. I'm executing YAP exhaustive sequence. This in turn calls these instantiations, YAP012, YAP1, YAP111 which in turn generate these packets and I can now see that my item in question is the third item of the instance YAP012. If I go back to my sequence I can see that YAP012 is an instance of the YAP012 sequence and I can go and, and look at that item and debug it and work out why I'm getting a short packet for that. Uh, this is all free, it's given to you built in into Incisive. All you have to do is to make sure you have the transaction recording turned on. Uh, quick tip if you're using this, uh, it's a good idea to have meaningful instantiation names here for your subsequences because the instantiation names appear in the transaction recording here and if you use meaningful names it's much easier to debug it.